this neglected column in these four quadrants is probably one of the most important because usually there's some low hanging fruit in there. For mm. example, a lot mm -hmm. of people, entrepreneurs probably aren't spending the time they probably should mm -hmm. um, on their social media, mm -hmm. hitting their email list with marketing messages, mm -hmm. things like that. Things, maybe just creating content like this. Maybe they've always wanted to start a podcast, but damn, I don't have time. Welcome to the Buzzworthy Marketing Show. So I, I totally we got lost track because that I think that's such an important part. Like those are all repetitive things, right? Yeah. But see, there's three other boxes here. Number okay. two, number two is what are the challenging things that you're facing right now mm. that either take too much of your time or you're just not an expert or you're not interested in doing it? And mm. how can you delegate that to someone who's better than you? Mm. So for example, mm -hmm. I have to I have a graphic designer VA, his name's JR. I love the guy. He's working on a book cover for a new book I'm releasing. Mm -hmm. um, and I know I'm not going to make a good book cover. I can use all the AI tools in the world. They can't do as good as JR. I love right. this guy. Okay? Right, right. So that's a challenging thing. And same with building out funnels and things like that. Like, can I right. do it? Yeah. Am I the most qualified? No, I have Samuel. I have a guy mm -hmm. um, who's in Canada who builds all mm -hmm. my funnels, right? Mm -hmm. And and so with challenging, this is where I want to also bring out a term for an executive assistant. This is, and I hate the word outsourcing because it it's so broad. Mm. So what I've done is I've actually kind of separated it into two different terms. We have downsourcing mm. and we have upsourcing. Mm. So things that are not, you know, like they're important, but they're not important that I do it. Right. That's downsourcing. All the things I have my executive assistant do, I could do it, mm -hmm. but it's it's not the best use of my time. Right. Okay. Right. Up, upsourcing is, hey, I am challenged doing this. Um, I'm definitely not going to do as good as someone else. I need someone who's skilled, who knows how to do this stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm upsourcing to someone who knows how to do it better. I love it. Okay. I love it. And, that, right, and so there's a, there's a uh, to, to interject there. There is a formula for both. The first one on downsourcing is the easiest one. Would you pay? So most entrepreneurs do not think that they, or they, they underestimate what their actual value is per hour. But if we break our, our value down, so if you were to spend an hour doing what you do best for your company, how much revenue can that create? Right. And if you can't create revenue for your company in a matter of an hour to two hours, then you're in the wrong spot in your business. So let's just start there. But number two, let it go, go back is that whatever that is. So let's just say it's a hundred dollars an hour because it's an easy number. Most of us are more worth $250 plus. We just don't know it because we haven't been efficient with our time. Right. But let's call it a hundred dollars an hour. So if checking your email, would you pay somebody a hundred dollars an hour? to check your email? If the answer is no, why the hell are you paying yourself $100 an hour to check your email? That's right. when you know you have to downsource. Your upsource has to do with the amount of time it takes for you to get as good, as good at best, somebody else is doing, which is what Jeff was talking about. So Pete, go on. I just wanted people to know when no, to do that. That's a great, that's a great analogy. And absolutely like, like my graphic designer and stuff, like, man, I'm not going to be as, as good as him. Yeah. So why, um, <laughs> why try? I mean, it's, it's a waste of your time. Yeah. yeah I mean, uh, Stephen Covey, if you, if you really want to dive into this, this specific topic, go to, uh, to read seven habits of highly effective people by Stephen Covey. It is a old book. Um, but it has been, uh, in, I want to I can't remember how many prints it's in, but it's still there. His son is now teaching it. Um, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, type of thing. So it's really good. So, and they talk about the four quadrants of like, I'm good at it, but, um, what is it? I'm good at it, but not efficient. I am not good at it. Uh, I don't, oh, no, I like it, but I'm not good at it. I love it. And I'm really good at it. Um, I am, I like it. Uh, I love doing it, but I'm not good at it. And there's, the, I can't remember the fourth one, but anyway, you're always trying to get yeah. like into the things where it's like, you like it and you're the most efficient at it is usually there, but then you have to take the monetary piece. And it, is that the best use of your time monetarily? So anyway, keep going. Yeah. yeah and yeah, on that, you know, another book that reinforces that if, if we're on books is Dan Martell's buy back your time. It's Ooh, another uh, one really good. It's a great, great oh, yeah. book that just helps break down 
how much time that we waste and, oh, gosh. and yeah. not, not, to, not to mention how much easier life is. Like that's one mm -hmm. of the things that I think, you know, I actually feel bad. I have pity for people who just never had the luxury of waking up and with, you know, and like an executive assistant is like a lifeline, man. Like mm -hmm. I just have to wake mm -hmm. up carefree, carefree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't ever yeah. have to look at my calendar the night before. You no, know, like I'm, I don't I'm even good. like you were talking about having your notifications. I don't even have it on my phone anymore. <laughs> like it's not there. Like I, the only reason I have, it's not like a lot of people will put their email at the bottom of their, their, their home screen. Mine's in a buried in a folder. I don't even check my email on my, on my uh, phone at all, unless I'm on the road and I need access to it. Right. Yeah. And that's yeah. it. I don't, I don't even. I don't even check my email email. Like my, the way that we work it is that I have her put anything I need to see in my Google task list. And so my Google task list is now my inbox. So even if there's a hundred emails in there from the last hour, I got blown up. I don't even have to look at it when I log into my, to Gmail. I just go to my task list and click on the task and it shows me the email that's there. She's already done everything. She said, these are the ones you have to look at. And she brings it from probably 75 to 125 emails a day down to about eight. Done. Wow. You know? Yes. You can go to the gym in the morning and not worry about anything this morning. You know what I did? My parents were in town and I'm like, I'm not, and I've been out of, I've been out of town for out of country for 17 days. Right. I went and cleaned my pool. So my mom can be at the pool today. That's what I did That's with all. my morning not wearing a damn thing. And normally if I didn't have that, I would have been up at five o'clock in the morning, skipped the gym and been at my, my desk trying to catch up with damn emails for the last 17 days. I think that's pretty much what most people deal with. So yeah. Yeah. Which by the way is a perfect lead into the third quadrant, which is the things that you know you should be doing, but you're, you're neglecting them. <laughs> that's, it. that's it. Thank you very much. I knew I, I uh, couldn't think of it. Yes. 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 So, that's the one. Yeah. So, but you so had this, this this neglected column in these four quadrants is probably one of the most important because usually there's some low hanging fruit in there. For mm -hmm. example, a lot mm -hmm. of people, entrepreneurs probably aren't spending the time they probably should mm -hmm. um, on their social media, mm -hmm. hitting their email list with marketing messages, mm -hmm. things like that. Things, maybe just creating content like this. Maybe they've always wanted to start a podcast, but damn, I don't have time, you know? Um, there's so many different things that you are neglecting because you are doing those repetitive tasks. You're working on those challenging mm -hmm. tasks, right? Mm -hmm. And by the way, some of these things can be in multiple columns. Maybe you are neglecting your emails, <laughs> right? Maybe the social media, maybe the social media is a repetitive task that you're doing and you should be delegating that out. Maybe you are spending too much time on social media, right? right. Maybe you're scrolling on TikTok. I don't know. Yeah. Um, there's just That's so right. many different <laughs> scenarios. Right. And think about think about the things that you are not doing mm. because you don't have the time. That's what mm. that neglected column is. And here's the most valuable column, which is literally the most valuable column. That's what it is. <laughs> so the quadrant, this is the value quadrant. And like, what is the most valuable use of your time? Like mm -hmm. what, let's, let's, and it doesn't just have to be revenue generating activities, which I believe obviously is important from a professional aspect, but mm -hmm. like I was able to take off to my son's game. You were able to take 13 days off in Ireland and go golf, mm -hmm. right? Like, mm -hmm. like a lot of business owners today, another reason why an executive assistant is such an important first hire, a lot of people who own a business, if they just left for a week mm. and turned their phone off, their business would crumble. Oh, completely. Right? Completely. Yes. Yes. So, and oh, go, go ahead. I was just going to say, like, we, you, you just have to figure out, like, what's the most viable use of your time? Mm -hmm. It could be, it could be going to masterminds and networking. It could mm -hmm. be uh, creating content. Mm -hmm. It could be, Spending time with your existing clients so you don't have the churn rate, you know, right. there's exactly. so many things that you could be doing with your time. That's mm -hmm. maybe it's launching that course you've been putting off. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so you want to think about, or, or, or maybe it's just not working on Fridays and becoming a three day weekend enthusiast. So you can spend time with your family. Cause yeah. you know, entrepreneurship is tough. 
Uh, well, the burn, right. burnout, I, I think that there was one thing that people don't realize when they talk about the freedom. I remember my first 13 years in business and I would feel guilty for taking vacations, even though the vacations were probably not enough. Well, I know they were not enough because I didn't take them very often. And when I did, I was guilt. I felt guilty for even saying something on social media that I was on uh, uh, vacation because I thought I was I was either fl I, I had the whatever it is. Uh, it's called Catholic guilt is what I call it. But um, it's just like if you're if you're showing off, it's like you're, you're showing off, but you're not. You're enjoying your life like everybody else. Right. But if you don't give yourself the downtime. And as you get older, you need more of it, by the way, folks. So when you're 21 and, you, and we used to do those old nighters to, to get things through, that's great. But as you get in your 30s and your 40s, that doesn't happen as often because you're mm -hmm. going to worry yourself out. And if, if taking time for you, your family, uh, you specifically, like family is awesome. And I, and 100%, anybody who's got that high on their list, they the only thing higher than that, besides God, it would be you because if you're not in good enough shape to be present with your family the time with your family is wasted so make sure that yes make time for your family like jeff was talking about but you got to make time for yourself even if it's just i get up at quarter to five in the morning and i go to the gym i run a mile to the gym work out for 45 minutes run back that mm. time is me time there's nobody else is there. Nobody's making me do it, but I know that it, it makes me a better, a smarter during the day because my brain is clear. It makes my, my, my health better so that my wife can count on me. It makes my business better because my business can take, uh, can count on me when I'm here. Right. It also makes me more efficient, right? All of these things, it's all there. And that's in, in, it might be just going for a walk for you. It might be reading a mm. book. It might be playing video games could be mm -hmm. your thing. Like that's the that's thing that thing. clears your brain. That's great. <laughs> that's awesome. For me, I'd, I'd probably go hit golf balls more often, but I know I have to go to the gym. <laughs> that's just one of the things I know I have to do. And I feel, I feel bad when I don't do it as far as like physically and mentally, I don't feel as energetic. I mean, people are like, how oh, do you have all this energy? It's like, oh, you go work out, you get more energy. I don't, don't ask me why, how that goes. <laughs> but the, before we, we, we wrap this up, when we talk about an executive assistant, can an executive assistant do more than just check? Like you were saying, like they do your proposals and stuff like that. When you get like somebody that's as good as yours, and um, I'm not going to, I'm going to say how long I've had mine, but how long does it take to get an executive assistant at to that level? Because a lot of so people- my here, executive assistant will be three years this month. There so you. Uh, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that to really start getting to where they're a hundred percent sufficient. Mm -hmm. They understand your business. They understand mm -hmm. you. I mm -hmm. always have them do research on me and my business and, mm -hmm. you know, the brands and all that. Um, you know, I would say 60 to 60 to 90 days. So two or three months, mm -hmm. uh, really in the trenches with you day to day. And mm -hmm. let me give you guys a delegation tip. A lot of people come to me with three big lies, my guy. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Number one is, I don't know how to delegate. I suck at delegation, right? <laughs> um, let me give you a really quick tip to overcome that limiting belief, which is you're doing the work already. All you have to do is turn on your Zoom, uh -huh. ask them to join, share yeah. your screen, and explain what the hell you're doing. Yes. Right? Right. And then what I teach my clients is what we call the reverse shadowing method. So first, they're shadowing you. You're explaining it. You turn the recorder on mm -hmm. that turn that gets turned into an SOP. Like, mm -hmm. Hey, here's, I don't like these emails. These are spam. Mm -hmm. Look out for things like this. This is important. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm just using email for, because we all do that yeah. as a example. That's usually the first then, one. <laughs> yeah. That should be one of the first things. Absolutely. And then you, you do what we call reverse shadowing. Whereas now the VA is sharing their screen mm -hmm. and you're watching them do the task from the SOP. Mm -hmm. Right. And make sure they get it and they won't need the SOP after a while, but you, you know, they're going to, gonna, they're always going to feel like, Oh my gosh, Oh, the pressure, you know, like, Oh, they're watching me. That's how it always is in the beginning. Right. And then the cool part about that is because we're always worried as leaders that, that someone might mess up and make us look bad. Mm -hmm. It's true. And okay? mm -hmm. this is a true mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. So what this does, it gives the, it, it, it subsides that inner control freak. Mm. Um, 
say because you're watching someone do what you just taught them to do mm. so you actually get the final say they're doing it and then if they do something that's messed up like oh hey you forgot to use the flag thing flag this and mark it as mark it as unread or you forgot you know i would reply to it this way right or whatever right? yeah so like that after a while you know like they get in the group. what's funny is, is that you would be spending the time anyway doing the work it might take a little bit extra of your time to watch them do it and struggle mm -hmm. for the first couple, you know, days or whatever, but mm -hmm. eventually they're just going to get it. Mm -hmm. And then the cool part about that is that that time is gone. You never mm -hmm. have to worry about doing that again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like you're making an investment mm -hmm. and never happen to check your email again. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. Like it's so important. Right. So, so, uh, so to answer your question, to get someone to really, to, and this is where I, and this is another thing I, I really want to work on, you know, leadership development internally for my own clients, because mm -hmm. what I've learned is like, I'm getting good results because I've learned how to become the leader that she needs me to be. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm empowering her. I'm letting her fail. Sometimes <laughs> I give her a task. Like, can you make this presentation in the beginning? I was like, dude, Come on, this really sounds like ChatGPT, you know? Like, nice. You got to do, yeah, right? be doing so them. Yeah, yeah. So then, what we did was, you know, I, I worked with her, and by the way, we're using Claude now, is which is way better for that. Yes. Um, and yeah, and so now, like, we kind of dialed that in together, and she knows like what she like in the beginning when she was making presentations for me, she would have like four sentences on a slide. I'm like, I just need one sentence, maybe two. Mm -hmm. Short, never more than five or six words a sentence. The mm -hmm. whole idea of the slide is to just reinforce the point, and I'm mm -hmm. going to tell a story with that slide. Right. You know, so now right. you know. So it's something that over time, and see, this is what's beautiful. This is actually, this is a great way for us to end this. Okay. The, the beautiful thing about hiring an executive assistant, A, they're dedicated to you. Do not hire a freelancer. You're going to get heartbroken, my guy. Mm -hmm. It's going to be so mm -hmm. sad. Because they're, you're going to spend all this time and they're going to juggle different clients and then they're going to leave to someone who pays more or a better opportunity mm -hmm. because you hire an entrepreneur and you need someone mm -hmm. with an employee mindset. Sorry. Right. We don't even hire people that have VA experience. We hire people from call centers in the Philippines that are used to working American hours. And mm -hmm. then we teach them how to become executive assistants. I love it. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's our secret, by the way. Mm -hmm. love <laughs> we're gonna, now we're going to be competing with you at the call centers, right? But, <laughs> um, but but here's the thing, unlike a computer or a car or your camera, uh -huh. unlike these inanimate objects that lose value and depreciate over time, mm -hmm. when you hire an executive assistant human, unlike AI and things, it's going to grow in value over time. I love it. And, it's, and, it, and humans still have one massive advantage over AI because a lot, there might be people thinking, you know what, I, I, AI can do a lot of the stuff. Why would I need to hire a human? Mm -hmm. and let me tell you something. AI is never going to care about you. Nope. It's never going to give a damn about mm -hmm. your business. It might pretend. Mm -hmm. Right. But man, having someone who wakes up every day at that nine o'clock, we had our nine o'clock call just an hour or so ago mm -hmm. and we ran over the to-do list and she cares, right? She sent me a message 10 minutes before this podcast and told me, hey, you got a podcast coming up and she's like, you got to know about this. She did a little backgrounds from Buzzworthy. You guys <laughs> met it in Austin at this thing. And I was like, oh, thanks for catching me up on that. Cause I was like, who is Mike? Who is this guy? Right? <laughs> I feel so important all of a sudden. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, what's cool, man. Like your assistant really does make you look good. Like I go to a call. I'm always prepared. She knows I will not just have like I she knows before I go on to a call, I want to know background. What did we talk about last time? Where did this come about? Do some research on the person like right. I'm prepared, man. Nice. And that is, that just makes you look so good. It does. If you've been listening to this and you're like nodding your head like, yes, I need an executive assistant like that. I would love to help you out. We're going to put a link here um in this and i i really do uh, you should just schedule a strategy call with my team completely free and just learn and see if it's actually something that you're ready for right now i would love to be able to help you if i can <laughs>